Fighters Rep 5, Unified Strikers, Saturday, February 2nd at the Ames Sportsplex in Seal Beach, California. Tickets now on sale at fightersrep.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Knucklehead Nation, I'm here with UFC fighter Alex Perez out of Team Oyama. Uh, Alex, I've been wanting to sit down for you for a while, man. Thank you so much for your time, brother. Oh, no, man. Thank you for having me. For sure, for sure. You know, I wanted to first kind of go over your career. You tell us, you know, who you are for those that don't really know yet. Um, and then I kind of wanted to reflect on your fight with Joseph Benavides over, over the past weekend. Um, but first of all, kind of tell us, you know, who you are, how you got to the UFC, you know, you're, you're three and one now, which kind of blows me away, you know, uh, just tell us a little bit about your resume. Uh, my name's Alex Perez, um, I'm from Central California, uh, you know, born in Hanford, raised in Lake California, wrestled for them in high school, wrestled for them at junior college, uh, started fighting when I was 18. I did three amateur fights, and by the time I was 19, I did uh, my first pro fight. Uh, my first year, I, I think I went like, I think I did like six or seven five pro fights in about eight months. Uh, um, you know, it took off, just took off and started doing it. It's about momentum. And then, uh, you know, probably I was, I think I was about seven and two, eight and two, and then came down to Timoyama to help Ian McCall for one of his training camps. And I was getting ready for one of my fights, and um, that's how I met Coach Oyama, Team Oyama, and everybody here. And then that was about five years ago, five and a half years ago. And then uh, ever since then, uh, I I was working back home. I set up money for about a month, and to come back here and live at the gym for a while, and you know do that for about a year or two. You were living here yeah, in the living, gym. I was, I was living at the gym, and then um, and then probably about another year. Oh, that was about a year. That I did that for and then uh, I, I, I reconnected with one of my good friends, Brandon Rocha, and uh, he lives probably about, he used to live about about eight to ten miles away from here. Yeah. I didn't have a car at the time, so I'd ride my bike from his house <laughs> in the morning to the gym, train all day, stay at the gym, eat around here, and then try, uh, ride my bike back. You know, did that for about a year, and finally got my car, and it was still coming back and forth working at a freight company back in uh, in Fresno. Uh, it's called Valley Express. Worked from uh, 5 a.m. to about 8 p.m. And then still find time to train. I would get training, I'd get fights in, and uh, I'll get a fight and then come back from training camp. And he finally moved to Huntington Beach, so I finally got a car moving to Huntington Beach. Kind of slept on my couch for a couple months, probably like six, seven months. And then we, you know, now we got the fight team and stuff. So then, uh, Finally made the move down here. I committed after my second loss in a row. Uh, I won, I won ten in a row. Ended up winning the Tachi title. Uh, my first defense. I when I was supposed to defend that, I lost to Adam Antolin. He uh, he ended up going to Ultimate Fighter uh, Champion Show, and then I uh, ended up losing to Jared Papazian right after that. Kind of a uh, you know. And I was I remember sitting in my hotel room with Coach Oyama, my good buddy Scott. Um, and you know, kind of like, ah, oh, this is it, man. My like, kind of just gonna retire, kind of just get to work, kind of stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, you're only even now you're only 26 <laughs> years old, right? Yeah. So I mean, what are we talking about? Retire here, Alex? Yeah, Come man, on, brother. I, I, you know, I did everything I could at that point. I thought, yeah, man, yeah, I was yeah. Gonna get the call. Uh, Coach Oyama kind of sent me down, but man, I think you can get, you know, you can make it to your seat. So you with the best guys in the world. I was like, all right. So he's like, hey, on Monday I need you to move down here. And I found a Thursday, so I only had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, little Monday, and I kind of nice. just thought about it Very for a couple nice. days. Like, fuck, do I do this or not, you know? And, uh, you know, I just packed all my stuff in my car and just made the move down here. And, uh, I mean, it's worked out for me. Uh, I got on the contender show at 17 and 4. And uh, before that, I was supposed to fight Chad George. I still want that fight, so Chad George, anytime you want to come to the oh, gym, come to the gym. We, can, we can come up. Oh my you know, goodness! You kind of said that I was, you know, kind of made it seem like I was scared to fight him, you know. But the, <laughs> oh, the, the, shit. the contender, the contenders, kind of came up and they're like, "Hey, you got twenty five pound spot, make the weight." I was like, uh, "Okay," so I made the weight and got my mm. chance through the contender series and uh, made my uh, UFC debut last December, December eighth or ninth, and then since then I'm three one in the UFC fought. Uh, Pro called jo Carl John the Thomas beat him first uh, second round by Eric Shelton uh, decision um, kind of was my best fight 
And if he wants a rematch, he can come get some. He talks a lot of smack, too. Uh, Jose Torres, we fought in August. Oh, uh, what a fight uh, that you know, was. I came man. out and then, you know, fight open, opened up a lot. And then uh, fought Joseph Benavides uh, November 30th. Didn't go my way, but um, it is what it is. 3-1 in the UFC, one year to get four fights. Um, pretty amazing when I never thought I was ever going to make it. That fight with Shorty was incredible, man. <laughs> uh, that was all action. You're really aggressive. Your style is, is. I mean, is that something that's just been? You've been that way lately, or is that something? Is it the way you've always been? Kind of? Um. Well, I kind of went through a phase where, like, I, I obviously I came out like my first fight, pro fight, got TKO. Yeah. Then I went to decision, and then I ended up. I, I don't. Know, I can't remember. I was two and zero or three and zero, but then I lost two fights in a row. Kind of made me shell back up, and then kind of took me a while to open back up. Then I fought. Um, then I fought Eric, uh, no, Adam Antolin, and I opened up, like, on my feet, I looked great and everything, and then he ended up, he ended up getting me in a good guillotine, I, I, he pushed, kicked me to the, to the sternum, kind of knocked the air out of me, yeah. then he started, uh, then he got me in a guillotine, you know, and it beating me, losing my title, and then from there, kind of, like, shelled back up, you know, because I was like, man, I opened up, and this is what happened, shelled back up, and then, um, I ended up fighting a couple more times. I fought for CFFC in front of Dana White, and I was still kind of shelled up. Like I was like, oh man, I can take this guy down, just beat him up. And you know, I did that. Got got a board decision, and then uh, me and Coach kind of talked about it. And then uh, ended up fighting this guy named Rafa Costa, a uh, super good jiu-jitsu guy, super tough guy. I, I on her feet, like in the first round, I was back and forth. I ended up dropping him. And then I ended up taking him down like at the last 10 seconds. I remember him going for a gogo potter, like right off the back. 10 seconds left, his foot was already up to here. I was like, oh man, I can't take this guy down. Oh, and he's a good wrestler too. So then I ended up, like the second, third round, I ended up opening up on him on my feet. He would, I would throw crazy combinations, you know, and he would try to take me down. I would stuff the takedowns, get back up, stuff like that. And uh, kind of opened up my eyes, like, okay, I need, this is what I need to do all the time. And, you know, so yeah. from there, I kind of opened up and. Uh, but you're, so it, you, it took a while. But you're originally like a rest. You're originally a wrestler, yeah. right? That's your base. Yeah, wrestling. I started wrestling about sixth, seventh grade, and yeah. then I wrestled all through. You know, I wrestled in middle school, high school, and then junior college. But being with Team Oyama, do you feel like your striking is now at the same level as the wrestling? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we train hard. We train everything. We train wrestling. Yeah, we yeah. train our jujitsu. We train our like. We're not just one stop shop. We just go Muay Thai here. Go to wrestle another right. gym. Like this, a one stop shop. Uh, yeah, that's what makes us unique. We got everything in one house. Yeah. You know, um, great jiu jitsu coaches like uh, Ron Turner, Casey Hallstad, Matt Salinas. You know, all those guys put a lot of time into us. And uh, Coach Oyama, Romeo Donza, our stand up coaches. You know, I'm the wrestling coach here. And, uh, you know, uh, I feel like it's a one stop shop. So that makes us unique. Well, that's how I met you. I mean, uh, putting some of the fighters from Team Oyama. On our shows, I was lucky enough to meet you at the time. You were one and zero when I met you <coughs> in the UFC, and I was like, "Wow, this guy's one and zero in the UFC." And you know, not even a, a year and a half passes by, you're three and one. I mean, <coughs> maybe because it's you. I mean, it's you know, you don't realize it perhaps because you're living it. But I mean, three and one at the UFC at just 26 years old. I mean, I'd be going nuts inside. You know, I mean, how how does how does that resonate with you? How does that make you feel? You know? um, for me. It's just like another day in the office, man. Uh, people know me. Uh, I should like I don't really drink. I don't really smoke. I you know I'm real, I'm real, I'm about business. People like people smoke. You don't really street, drink, drink and smoke, smoke or do you not drink and smoke? I, I don't drink. Really, like I'll have, I have an occasional drink. You know? Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll occasionally smoke. Like I'm not saying like I'm the perfect angel or whatever. You know. Well, what are we but, drinking? What are uh, we smoking? <laughs> anything, man. I, I'm done, you know, like we have a good time, we're still young. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, yeah, I really don't yeah, party, yeah. man. Like, I don't like to party. I don't like to, like, go out and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, people, are, like, my friends call me old man because I'm in bed by, like, 11, the latest, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. 10 30 and stuff. And uh, this is my job. Like, the most celebrating you get for me is probably in the cage. Yeah. And then, man, and after the fight, we have, I have a shot with my coach, my manager, and my, and my corners. Very eat a nice. pizza. Very nice. And then usually I'm back in the gym by Monday. Even if I'm hurt, um, I usually come in the gym, try to help out, like watch some of the guys, help the guys with techniques, whatever I can help with. I try to be at the gym all the time. Well, what's the drink of choice? Uh, 
man, I'm a I'm a whiskey kind of guy. Yeah, you know? man, yeah. Uh, I really don't do good. I don't like beer. Like not beer. proper twelve though, no, right? No, not proper, proper twelve. 12. <laughs> I go like a Jameson. If we're getting too crazy, we, we you know depending on how crazy my corner gets, we'll go with some uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label. Uh, I like it. You know? I like Just it. Just depending how the budget is. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, you have new labels. That's pretty big money. Uh, yeah. So. <clears throat> Let's let's uh, reflect a little bit on the Joseph Benavidez fight, uh, the last one that just happened. Kind of take me through it. You know what? What were your thoughts on the fight? What you, what did you take away from it? Um, I mean, for one, I took the fight on. You know, people say short notice. I'm always in the gym, so it's really never short notice. The biggest thing for me is the weight cut and stuff like that. I'm a yeah, little bigger, yeah. 25 er But like, I'm perfecting athletes and doing an amazing job with my nutrition. And, Literally, they won't be down to diet and be like, if you follow this, you'll make weight. Yeah. Easy, no problem. And I'll follow it to the They can tell me you cheat, you know. So if my waist had come out, I'm like, what'd you cheat on? I'm like, oh, like, you know, you can't lie to them. So, like, I did everything they said, weight came off. I think the day before, the day before wins, I, was one, I woke up at 133. Wow. You know? That's pretty light for me. Um, and uh, cut the weight easy, felt good, rehydrated. Uh, the fight, um, kind of, uh, I, I really don't, like, I honestly, like, no disrespect to Joseph and them. I feel like I'm the better guy. Um, people, a lot of people, I mean, they said they couldn't see it or whatever, but, um, and that one of the exchanges, uh, when he kind of looked like he kind of ran me over, we ended up colliding heads, and that kind of put me out. And then from there, see, it was just scrambles. Uh, like, blurs to me, like, I can't really, I watched the fight, but, like, even, even if I think back to it, I, like, I was there, obviously, but I couldn't, I wasn't there. Like, uh, I didn't see that Eve Levine, uh, Stop the fight and I let it keep going. And yeah, that's when I guess yeah. I tried to lift Joseph and got to a scramble. And I remember being in a front headlock. And then don't remember, I remember um, being on the single leg and just remember I'm getting hit once in the back of the head and then just don't remember too much. And then watching the video again, you know, like I said, I think I think the fight was pretty close. It was only in the first round, so I think the fight was pretty close. I don't think he was, I think, like, I mean, it just depends on the ref was going in. Yeah. You know, he was, he was landing more, I think, I think he was landing a little bit more. I think I was losing the first round just because he was landing a little bit more, but I don't think I was getting blown out. I think, like, I still had two more rounds to work. I was probably, I probably could have opened up a little bit more in the second, third round, but, you know, stuff happens. So yeah. Not the first time I lost, but the last time I'm going to lose. Yeah. Um, things up, you know, I, I plan to change. I'll say I got to work on my defense. I got to work on a lot of stuff like that. Um. Always, always room to improve. Three and one, my man. Uh, you lost to a guy who's a two-time title challenger, seasoned in the octagon. What's he, 34 years old at this point? Um, and after the fight, he was calling for uh, the winner of, I think it was Cejudo Dillashaw. He wanted to fight one of them. I mean, so 26 years old, you're knocking at the door, basically, of a title shot already. Uh, now, another thing, another little wrinkle in the story is that division looks like it's going the way of the dinosaur. Am I right? Um, from what I heard, there's so many rumors. Honestly, I don't know if it's going away or not going away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've told me you're fine that you're going to be moving up to 35s, but then I look at the roster, there's still a lot of 25ers on there. I'm not sure if they can just, I'm not sure how the contracts work. You know, yeah. Everybody's contract is different or, you know, whatever it is. I let my manager just handle all that, but I don't know if they can just kick the guys out, you know, yeah. because, you know. So I don't know what's going on. To me, it doesn't matter. 25s, 35s, it doesn't change my goal at hand. That's to obviously be the best in the world. And uh, 25s, 35s, it doesn't matter. Gotcha. Uh, I'm going to eventually get there. Gotcha. I, I was, wa you know, I saw the highlights as well. And uh, I love to read the comments section, you know, on YouTube <laughs> and stuff. It's always a trip to me. And a lot of people were saying, <coughs> excuse me, that you were getting hit in the back of the head. And to me, it looked like you were getting hit in the back of the head quite a bit. In that fight, I mean, do you think that had any kind of effect on you? Uh, I I think uh, it it did a, either the headbutt or that did because uh, right now I'm going to the concussion protocol. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you know, I've had a like at first I was obviously I was upset. I ran out of the cage. You know, like I show respect to John and the team. Ran out of the cage, went in the back. It's kind of got my hand checked out. Of uh, my hand was kind of swollen, mm -hmm. and then uh, I kind of went back, hung out with my team. You know, and I was eating. And then all of a sudden, like I'm watching TV, stuff still started getting blurry. So my head started pounding really hard. So then I end up going back to the UFC office because we're staying at the Palm, so the venues all together. So I go back in there and they end up taking me to go get a CT scan on my head. Everything came out negative, but then even a few days, like I've let a few days pass, 
and I started trying to run. Uh, I ran for like about 15 minutes, and I, and I was shadow boxed for a little bit, and then like, and I, I was coaching, and um, my head started pounding, you know? Yeah. And um, so I, I like that whole night, I had to leave early because my head was pounding. And, and then um, I usually teach a 6 a.m. class here on Tuesdays. I gave it to somebody else. Woke up the next morning, my head pounding, and I'm going back to the doctor. So right now I'm in the like, concussion protocol. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, you know, my biggest thing um, is I, for me, like the loss doesn't really matter. It's more of the rest of like I feel like commission. Every commission tries to find all the fighters for different things. Yeah. And I get they're doing their job. That like the commission there at hand is doing the stuff and just doing their job, what the guidelines tell them to do. And I understand that, but for me, it's like. This guy, I could have been seriously hurt, and uh, I feel like there's no punishment for him. I seen him repping this la last week in EDV. I seen him repping this last week in Canada, but like he just put he one he, he put me in danger. I could have been seriously hurt, yeah. getting punched in the back of the head and stuff like that. And I know it's I know it's a dangerous sport, so I'm not putting it on him. But he stopped the fight. At least if you're gonna stop it, stop it there. Don't stop it and let it keep continue. Right, right, right. You know, like and then he let another girl get kneed in the face. You know, when she was a down opponent, um, for me, like, there's no consequences for the ref when they mess up. I feel like suspend them, find them something. Like, yeah, you yeah. just, like, you guys like to find us and like to take our money, which is <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. Like, you guys are doing your job. But then what about, there's no consequences for guys like that. Like, to me, I, like, I don't like to get people in trouble. I don't like to get people fired. But there's got to be consequences because if you mess up that bad in, in a real job, Doing something paperwork or something messing yeah. up paperwork, or something, you're gonna get fired or you're gonna get in trouble written up or something. But there is nothing that I have not seen anything been been told or anything happened to the ref. He was wrecked in a couple, you know, like I said last weekend on a Max Holloway car. Yeah, well, that was an interesting fight as well. Uh, but but before we get to that, um, what's What's next for you? I mean, would you want to run that back? Are you going to go up to 135? What, what's going to happen um, to you next? To me, it just depends, man. Whatever the UFC wants. Yeah. I have not turned down a fight yet in the UFC. I've said yes to every fight. I've had, they've offered me plenty of fights, and I've said yes. And, you know, like, yeah. if I'm heavy or not, like, heavier than I'm sure I'm supposed to be, I've said yes. I know it's going to be a hard wake up, but I, I, will, I will make the weight. I will get down, to, you know, I will die trying to make the weight. Uh, Are you more comfortable at 125 or 130? It, it doesn't matter to me, honestly. Yeah. I feel great. I mean, people are like, oh, like that's a, you cut a lot of weight for 25s. But it's like, look at my performance at 25s. I haven't been like, I mean, even against Eric Shelton, I didn't feel my best. Yeah. But but I still went out there and dominated. Um, Troy Torres, I felt great. Man. Like, they kind of yeah. good. against Benavides. I mean, I didn't look I was sluggish or anything. I mean, I was a little hesitant. I feel like just because he kept leaning in with his head. But, I mean, it wasn't like I was sluggish. Like, I was out there, like, you know, I wasn't that, able to move or anything. That's a massive hit. I mean, you got to yeah. watch out with He's got uh, a pretty big hit. Yeah, man, that, he has a hard head, too. <laughs> uh, but to me, it doesn't matter what, what weight, what division. Um, I'm just, I mean, I said, I tell people all the time, I don't get paid to sit on the couch. Yeah. I get paid to fight. Uh, I'm a fighter. This is how I make my living. And uh, I'm willing to fight 25s, 35s. It doesn't matter yeah. to me. Well, I mean, I'd love to see the fight again, you know, see what happens. I, I think uh, you're both great fighters. I think anybody would want to watch that fight again. Maybe it happens at 135. I guess we'll see. Um, what did you think of that Ortega Holloway fight? I kind of want before we go here. I think I um, wanted to get your I wanted man, to get your thoughts on that. I like Ortega a lot. Like uh, when I first did my Fresno fight, um, I actually got to hang out with him because they had me do the media stuff because I'm from the Central Valley. Yeah. So and and I like I was asking him questions. You know, I mean he's in the line, like he's in the main event. You know, he was he's a cool guy. I really want him to win. I just feel like. Um, that night, obviously, I think he's a was better that night. I think Max was better that night. By far, I think Ortega kind of for. I feel like he forgot where he was. Like he's a jiu-jitsu guy. I think he tries down too much. Another man, like ten shot, pull guard, something like yeah, that. Yeah, Clinch yeah. him up, pull guard. He took him down that one time, but I mean, I feel like Max is great. I feel Ortega is great. I, I mean, he's only gonna make Ortega better. And he, he seems like he's a humble guy. I mean, from what I've talked to him personally, like, super chill, super guy, he's a humble guy then. So, like, he's gonna, he's, I mean, he's gonna, like, kind of bring him back to work harder. I mean, he's a tough kid, tough guy. You know, it's just, he's, he's, it's gonna be, I mean, sucks to lose, but I think the loss will be good. It's always good for everybody. Eventually, everybody loses. There's no one undefeated in the sport. Yeah. The only yeah. person right now is Ben Ashton. Right. Uh, but, right. I mean, 
the level of guys that you see fight from some guys in one FC to Bellator to UFC. It's a little bit different, you yeah, know. Yeah. So like, uh, he's undefeated still, and we'll see what happens when he comes to UFC. If he remains undefeated, he'll be the first guy. I know him and Khabib. Let me two guys actually. Yeah. Khabib's fought some of the best. Well, John Jones too, right? John, John Jones, Jones technically too. he has a loss, but he should be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has two yeah. Lo- technically two losses, no contest, whatever yeah. it is. I'm like, man, but th- I mean, those you know, I mean, those are a handful of guys. Yeah. Everybody falls eventually, you know. Yeah, I thought that game plan was a little funky with Ortega yeah. too. You know, standing there with a Muay Thai guy when you're more of a jiu-jitsu guy, trying to outbox him. Yeah. Being the shorter guy, you know. But Alex, man, thank you so much. This was, you know, this was great. It was great getting your thoughts on this. Um, uh, I- yeah, man. I, first of all, I want to thank Fighter Jeff for always having our back, always putting our guys on the card, and always thank you, man. Uh, always thank working, you. always being a, 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 you know, a great show to work with. Uh, we worked, started working with you the first show, and we had a couple guys on the shows, and you guys are doing great things for the MMA community in general. I like to thank C Next Wear. Those guys always uh, help out the team, help me out with my shirts and stuff like that. Uh, great company. If you guys haven't checked them out, check them out. I want to thank uh, you know some of my sponsors uh, and Miss Mary Jane CBD. Um, they're helping me with my recovery right now with my head injury. Uh, with CBD has uh, helped me recover to get back, in, you know, get back into where I need to be into the gym. I want to thank Perfecting Athletes, my the best nutrition company that you know, I've ever worked with. The only one I've ever worked with, but the best one. Uh, they go above and beyond for me. I want to thank, I want to thank my uh, good friend Fashion. Uh, he's a rapper. He's coming up. He, uh, you know, I met him a few months back. He's a grinder. And uh, just to everybody from Team Oyama, everybody from uh, the local of Macy, man. If you guys haven't checked out Five and Rep, you guys can go check out their show. Check out their Muay Thai show. Thank They're you, on February thank 2nd, you. But, Check out their animations. If you guys haven't checked them out, check them out. Uh, great promotion. Much love. Appreciate it, Alex. Man, we'll be catching up with you soon, brother.